Hi, I'm Botan from Intech Studio, and in this video I'm going to show you how to map keyboard and mouse messages to your grid controllers. We'll begin with something simple, the buttons. In grid, a button isn't just the obvious square buttons, it basically means any element that can be pushed down. That includes the large knobs on the Vision 1 and Tech 2, the encoders on the EN16, and of course the dedicated buttons you'll find on the Vision 1, Tech 2, BBF4 and BU16 modules. Let's take one of the Tech 2 buttons as an example. Once you've selected it in the editor, you'll see it comes with a default MIDI action block, but since we're not going to use MIDI for this particular setup, we can simply delete that. Instead, what we want to do is add a press release action block, which is important because it makes sure the command doesn't accidentally fire twice when you push the button down and then release it. So let's add that. Inside the press block, we are going to add a keyboard action block. Imagine we want this button to perform a copy function, essentially control plus C. So in the press block, we'll select left control from the drop down list, uh, set its state to key down, and then add the letter C as another key down. This way the button press is treated exactly as if you were holding down control and pressing C on your keyboard. Now for the release block, we need to do the reverse. Once again, we'll add left control, but this time we set it up as key up and do the same for the C key. Once you store the configuration, you've got yourself a working copy shortcut assigned to a physical button. If you also want a paste shortcut, uh, the nice thing is you don't have to start from scratch. You can just copy the entire element, overwrite a new button with it, and then change the C to a V in both the pressure and release blocks. And there you go. You now have a copy and paste side by side on two grid buttons. What's nice about this is that all pushable elements in grid behave in the exact same way. Once you've understood the process for one, you can apply it across Vision 1, Tech 2, EN16, PBF4, BU16, basically everything that can be pressed. Now let's move into something a little more advanced, which is using an endless control as a mouse wheel. Endless elements are those knobs and encoders that uh, can turn indefinitely, like the large knobs on the Tech 2 and Vision 1, or the encoders on the EN16. We'll use the big left knob on the Tech 2 to demonstrate. Select it in the editor and delete the default MIDI action block since, again, we don't need MIDI for this setup. Because this will involve conditional logic, the first thing you want to do is disable minimalist mode in the top right corner so you can see all the available options. After that, open up the endless mode settings and switch it to relative. Now we will add an if action block, which allows us to set conditions for what the knob should do depending on how it's turned. Type in self endless value greater than 64, that is self column endless underscore value open parentheses close parentheses space greater than space 64. Grid things in MIDI values ranging from 0 to 127, so 64 is the midpoint. What this condition means is when the knob is turned to the right, beyond the halfway point, do this action. Inside the if block, add a mouse move action block, set the axis to mouse wheel and the state to 1, which corresponds to scrolling up. Now we can store this, and uh, whenever you rotate the knob to the right, it will act just like scrolling up with your mouse wheel. To complete the setup, we simply duplicate this action block and make a small change. 
this time change the condition to self endless value um, less than 64. So that self column endless underscore value, open parentheses, close parentheses, space less than space 64, which uh, catches movements to the left and set the state to minus one, which tells it to scroll down. Save again, and now you've got a fully functional mouse wheel mapped to the tech2 knob. This exact same process works for the encoders on the EN16 or the big knobs on the Vision 1. And the beauty of it is that you're not limited to just mouse wheel actions. You can put any keyboard or mouse message you like inside those conditional if blocks. And honestly, this is just scratching the surface. Once you're comfortable with the basics, you can start experimenting with more advanced triggers, like launching programs or setting up really specific uh, workflows. For that, I recommend looking into Auto Hotkey. It's an open source tool that works hand in hand with Grid Editor and makes it really easy to add powerful custom functions. If you ever get stuck or want to share your own configurations, join us on our Discord server where you'll find both our team and a really active community of grid users. Thank you for watching and have fun experimenting.